Hi everyone, I'm Kara Suboy. And I'm Jeff Matt. And welcome to Junos Connect, your one-stop video source for all things Junos. Junos 10.1 is here. We'll give you a look at what's inside. And we'll take you behind the scenes of our new Junos Ready Software Business Group and find out what the future holds for Junos. But first, it's time for viewer email. And we get this question a lot, Jeff. What tools do you have to help me be more productive on Juniper Gear? Well, we've talked a lot about things like Junos Books, online training materials, automation tools like the scripting library on Junos Central. Mm -hmm. There's another tool on Junos Central. It's called Ida J for iOS to Junos. It's a software translator. It converts Cisco iOS configurations to Junos. Customers love it because it saves them a lot of time when migrating to Junos. Great. It is on Juno Central under the Tech Topics section, so juniper.net slash Junos. Now, in our next live event, we'll be taking a look at simplifying your technical operations with our Service Now feature on Juno Space and something we call AIS, or Advanced Insight Solutions. On our March webcast, we'll show you how these features can reduce network costs while increasing reliability. Get the details and register in our live event section on Juno Central. And remember, if you miss an event, you can can view the archive on Juno Central. Finally, you may have heard some noise from Juniper at the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. We made some pretty big announcements, including a new portfolio of certified apps from our Junos Ready Software business unit, a mobile security client called Junos Pulse for smartphones, nice. and this really cool thing that enables TV-like viewing experience on mobile devices called Juniper Media Flow. You can find out more at juniper.net slash mobility. Well, want to know what Junos 10.1 has to offer? For the first time, we'll be able to have Docs's connectivity. Docs Coming up next, we'll give you a first glimpse at the latest so release. Hello and welcome back to Junos Connect, your video source for all things Junos. I'm Kara Suboy. For over 10 years, we've had a new release of Junos software every quarter. Junos 10.1 is out and Jeff Huang from Junos Product Management is here to tell us all about it. Thank you for joining us, Jeff. And what are some of these new features? So we've got new features across all of our different product lines and product families. But the one that I wanted to start with was for our MX series. So we have a series of new cards based on our new Trio Silicon that we announced a couple of months ago. Uh, we're uh, announcing new modular port concentrators. These will be uh, 10, 30, and 60 gigabit MPCs for Ethernet. And what do these cards allow our users to do that they couldn't do before? New modular port concentrators, these are MPCs. We've got 10, 30, and 60 gigabit MPCs for Ethernet. This is the industry's highest density gigabit Ethernet and 10 gigabit Ethernet MPC. Yeah. Our customers can run stateful services such as JFlow or Lawful Intercept all in line. What's another highlight of this new release? So we're also enhancing the functionality of our SRX uh, security line. Um, we have enhanced chassis clustering. We also have enhancements to the scalability of our NAT implementation. And how will that feature help the user? How will it change their lives, the way they work? So we've always had NAT functionality, of course, but we're really increasing the number of NAT source rules that our customers can have. So this will be enhanced scalability all the way from the small end all the way up to the high end of our SRX line. And I understand that there's a new uh, connectivity enhancement for that same platform, is that right? That's right. So I brought an SRX 210 here. And for the first time, we'll be able to have DOCSIS connectivity, DOCSIS's cable uh, connectivity. So this enhances the WAN offerings for the SRX line. Um, our cable customers will be able to use cable modems to connect to the internet. And also we have, back here, 3G wireless. We're really building out the functionality of the wireless for this platform as well. So two different types of WAN connectivity on one box. That'll be really great, especially for our branch offices, won't it? Definitely. Fantastic. And where can we go to find more information about the new release? Juno Central. That's juniper.net slash Junos. Well, you know, our Jeff Madden is actually with Young Kim right now from the EX team, and they are giving this new release a test drive. They're going to show us one of the new switching features. Jeff? Thanks, Kara. Young, you're going to show us a new feature out in 10.1 on EX series switches. What are you showing us? So I'm going to be showing you the Captive Portal. It authenticates users using a web browser instead of special software such as 802.1x supplicant or using hardware information such as MAC address. OK, so where would we find this? Who would use this? So let's take Hotel as an example. So Hotel wants to provide network access to their guests. However, at the same time, guests are not willing to install specific software that's required by the hotel. So Captive Portal is a solution for that. OK, can you show us, please? Sure. Thanks. So let's assume that we just plug into the hotel network. 
Now I'm opening a web browser. Now we can see that we're trying to go to the Juniper.net page, and obviously the captive portal will actually kick in and ask, will ask for the login credentials to be provided. So I'm going to simply agree. And I can, as you can see, the login page is now asking for the login credentials to be provided. So I'm just simply going to go ahead and enter that there. OK, so exactly what a user would expect, username, password. Exactly. Now I'm just going to simply log in. And we can see the authentication was successful. In a few seconds, browser will redirect the page to original request, which is juniper.net. OK, so as a user, I got to where I wanted to go. But the IT folks who have to implement this on the X-Series switches, how do they do that? Is it easy to configure? So if they're familiar with setting up, say, 802.1x protocol, then Steps is very familiar. And it just only requires a few lines of configuration to enable Captive Portal. However, this is the first time they're actually implementing authentication. In that case, a few more steps are involved, such as setting up the authentication server on the back end, as well as setting up the Captive Portal on Switch. OK, thanks a lot, Young. Sure. Kara? What does the future look like for Junos? Juniper's serious about software. Stick around, we'll be the first to take you inside Juniper's newest business group. Looking for answers to questions about Juniper products? Join JNet and tap into the collective knowledge of a global community. Find solutions from Juniper users, experts, and Juno certified engineers. Register for a new user account between now and March 31st, and you'll be entered in a drawing to win prizes like an iPod Touch. Go to the link on your screen to sign up now. Welcome back to Junos Connect. I'm Kara Suboy. Earlier, we mentioned JRS, Junos Ready Software. What you may not know is that JRS is also a new business group solely focused on software. But just what does that mean for you? Patrick Wickstrom has the story. Juniper Network's recent creation of a new business group focused solely on software raises many questions for Junos users both new and established. And Mike Harding, the man responsible for one of the key products in the newly created Unos Ready Software Group, hopes the move says one thing very clearly. Juniper is serious about software. We've taken all the great expertise we've had on the device around the Junos operating system, and we've married that with uh, Junos Space, which runs across the network. And we're adding into that Junos Pulse, which runs on the endpoint, netbook, notebook, smartphone so that there's an end-to-end -end platform where we can host innovation and deliver new network innovations to our customers. That's a really cool thing. Harding says that Juno's Ready Software has taken Juno's space out of the back room and put it where it belongs, front and center with the already strong Juniper hardware groups. And from a feature function standpoint, it means we will be more integrated with the OS and the endpoint. So we're thinking it's also going to be like a deeper SDK development as part of this. In 2007, we um, opened up the Junos operating system for, for uh, collaboration with the Partner Solutions Development Program. And remember, an SDK is a number of things. It's not just one thing. It's a set of APIs, application programming interfaces, tools, examples, certification, testing, et cetera. We've got dozens of partners who are using that already. And the second half of this year, we're going to do the same thing with Junos Space. In fact, we've got a number of development partners who are already working with us um, on a private SDK. And we're trying to get that all worked out before we inflict it upon developers at large. And then overall, um, our plans include doing the same sort of thing for the endpoint. So then from the client clear across the network um, to the core, we can have a very interesting set of uh, value that can be delivered to customers. And we just announced also the, the venture fund or the innovation fund. So how does that tie into all this then? I think that's really exciting because if you've got a great idea about something that you can do with the network, something that takes you know, subscriber awareness with you know, security intelligence, with you know, any other network attributes, perhaps with software as a service or cloud, mash those things together. And if you've got an idea about that, share that with us. We may well be interested in funding that. To learn more about the Junos Innovation Fund, go to www.juniper.net slash junosfund or send your email to junosfund at juniper.net. For Juniper Networks, I'm Patrick Wickstrom. Don't forget, if you have a Junos-related question you'd like us to answer or recommendations for what you'd like to see in the next show, send it to jnet at juniper.net or simply leave a reply to the Junos Connect thread. That's it for this episode. For Patrick Wickstrom and Jeff Madden, I'm Kara Suboy. We'll see you next time right here on Junos Connect.